So we're going to take a look at the answers to the homework problems I asked you guys to work on where I skipped one of each type and then had that last page at the very end. Uh, so this number five here is an example of a synthesis reaction where we have an element plus an element coming together to make a compound. Um, anytime you make a compound, you have to check the charges of the things that you're putting together. So if you look at your periodic table, you would see that when magnesium forms charges, it forms a plus two charge. It's in the second column. Uh, nitrogen three needs three more electrons to be stable. It has a minus three charge. So when we take that magnesium plus two with nitrogen minus three, put them together and balance the charges, we make Mg3N2. Then, to balance our reaction overall, we would need a big three over there uh, in front of the magnesium. If we look at our combustion reaction, next, combustion reactions you can identify because they're always something plus oxygen. Uh, when you have inorganic combustion, really it's just like a synthesis reaction. It's just instead of any old element plus any old element, it's some element plus oxygen. So once again, every time we make a new compound, you have to check the charges on the things you're putting together. Aluminum is in the 3A column with a plus 3 charge. Oxygen forms a minus 2 charge in compounds. So our newly formed compound is Al2O3. Then we have to balance with our coefficients here a 4, a 3, and a 2 to get it to balance overall. Number 11 is an example of our... Uh, organic combustion. Organic combustion is when you have some kind of carbon-based compound being added to oxygen. Well, every time you have organic combustion, you're going to get carbon dioxide and water as your products. The only thing you have to do after that is balance. The next page are our single displacement reactions. Single displacement reactions were the ones that I said were like somebody cutting in at a dance. So we have fluorine, the element, trying to cut into our aluminum and oxygen compound. So the first thing you have to ask yourself is who does that fluorine want to dance with? If you accidentally messed up and tried to put the F and the O together, you should realize it when you go to balance your charges over here on the other side. Because fluorine in compounds forms a minus one charge and oxygen forms a minus two charge. The minus one and the minus two would repel one another. So fluorine doesn't want to dance with the oxygen, the fluorine wants to dance with the aluminum. When you put aluminum and fluorine together, aluminum has a plus three charge, fluoride has a minus one charge, so we get ALF3. Well, that kicks out the oxygen to be all by itself on the other side. Because oxygen is a Hofbrinkel, an element by itself, we have to put O2, not just O. And then we need some numbers here, six, two, four, and three, to balance our reaction overall. For our double displacement reaction, um, this was uh, the one where it's like square dancing. You gotta switch partners. So our lead is gonna go with our bromide. Our lithium is gonna go with our nitride. When we put the lead and the bromide together, if you're wondering what charge should the lead be, lead can form multiple charges. Well, whatever the charge of lead is on the left-hand side, it's gonna stay that same charge on the right-hand side. So if I asked you to name this compound here, and if I said, is this lead 2 nitride or lead 4 nitride, you should be able to figure out that that's lead Roman numeral 2 nitride. That means that we're going to combine lead Roman numeral 2 with our bromide ion, which is minus 1, so we get PBBr2. Our other compound, we're going to take lithium and put it with nitrogen. Lithium in compounds forms plus 1 charges, Nitrogen, when it turns into the ion nitride, forms minus three charges. So plus one, minus three, we get Li3n. And then we need our coefficients, two, three, six, and one, to get it to balance overall. For our decomposition, you know something's gonna be a decomposition reaction when there's only one thing on the left-hand side of the arrow. If it's a simple compound, like HBr, you just break it down the middle. The hydrogen goes one way, the bromine goes the other. Because the hydrogen and bromine are by themselves on the product side of this reaction, elements by themselves and Hofbrinkles, we have to have H2 
and BR2, and then a big two out there to get it to balance. Um, you could put ones here in front of the hydrogen and bromine. When carbonates and chlorides decompose, they always follow very consistent patterns. When carbonates decompose, they always make carbon dioxide gas as one product, but it goes from CO3 to CO2. Where does that other oxygen go? That other oxygen is going to combine with whatever metal happens to be in the problem. So when our potassium carbonate breaks down, we get our carbon dioxide. Where does that other O go? The other O is going to go with the potassium this time. Since our potassium is a plus one charge, oxide's a minus two, we get K2O. When chlorides decompose, they also follow very consistent patterns. One of the products is always going to be oxygen gas. Well, if this uh, oxygen gas is one product, where is the other product? We're always going to get a metal chloride as our other product. So when our divorce happens here, it happens between the Cl and the O, so the oxygen goes off by itself, Hofbrinkel. Then the chlorine is left to go with the magnesium. Because magnesium is plus 2 and chloride is minus 1, we get MgCl2. On the last page where you had to decide what type of reaction was going on and then figure out the products and balance, I knew that this first one was a double displacement because I see a compound added to another compound. That's your tip, that a double displacement reaction is going to happen. And when those double displacement reactions happen, the cation from one goes with the anion from the other. So our Fe plus 3 is going to go with our nitrate minus 1 to form FeNO33. Our other product is going to be silver with chloride. Silver is plus 1, chloride's minus 1, so we get AgCl. Then we need a 3, 1, 3, 1 to get it to balance overall. Number 30 I knew was a combustion because I saw oxygen as a reactant. The oxygen has to be on the left-hand side. Um, more specifically, this is inorganic combustion because I have a metal being added to my oxygen. Organic combustion would be a carbon-based thing being added to oxygen. Well, uh, inorganic combustion is just like a synthesis reaction. You're going to marry together the cesium and the oxygen to form a compound out of them. When we put cesium plus 1 with oxygen minus 2, we're going to get Cs2O. Then we need to balance overall with a 2, 1, 4. 31 I knew was a decomposition because there's only one thing on the left-hand side of the arrow, that KBr. So the only thing it can do is break up. So the potassium and the bromine separate. Because bromine is a Hofbrinkel, I have to write Br little 2. And then we have to balance with our coefficients. 1, 2, 2. 32 I knew was a synthesis because I'm taking an element plus an element. When I marry those guys together, I have to check the charges every time I make a new compound because strontium forms plus two charges and nitrogen, when it forms the nitride ion, is minus three. We're going to get Sr3 and two. Then we balance overall with that three in front of our strontium. Finally, I knew that 33 was a single displacement because I have a compound, H with Br, with an element just chlorine. Yes, there's two of them, but just chlorine. So you have to decide who does chlorine want to dance with, the H or the Br. If you tried to put Cl and Br together by accident, you should catch it when you go over to this side, because when you go to check the charges of the thing you're putting together, Cl would be minus one and Br would be minus one. They would repel one another. They wouldn't form a compound. So the chlorine must not want to be with the bromine. He must want to be with the hydrogen. So we're going to put H and Cl together, because H is plus 1 and Cl is minus 1, we do HCl. Uh, but that means that the bromine is going to kick, be kicked out all by himself, and because bromine is a Hofbrinkel, it's going to be Br2. Then we need a 1, 2, 1, 2 to get that to balance overall.